Welcome to chapter 16 and 17 of our blueprint book. Um, today we're going to be talking about two different welds, surface welds and edge welds. They're very different. They're lumped together just for convenience. Um, but first we're going to start talking about surface welds, which in my world are a lot more common. So what's a surface weld? Well, a surface weld is a real common technique used in repair operations in the heavy equipment world, usually used to build up a worn or damaged surface or to add a corrosion or wear resistant layer um, to, a, to a service. The, the real common application is like uh, um, hard facing, where you'll take a dozer blade that has been worn out and they will weld a very hard metal, metal over the top of it um, to give it a layer of wear protection. The real, like repair works where it's really common, um, shaft buildup. So if you've got a drive shaft, um, that a bearing rides on, bearing seizes and spins, you've got a big damage spot, spot in the shaft. So, so you've got your, your big shaft and you've got some big bearing on it. Well, when this bearing fails and this shaft is spinning, it's going to wear a big spot in that shaft. So what you do is you, after you cut the bearing off of it, you'll come through and you'll have a you'll have a worn spot. So what you'll do is you will build that up with weld and then they'll remachine it and they'll have a shaft again. Um, the other real common use for it is building up poorly fit up or poorly cut parts. So if I've got a, a weld joint set up here and let's say my root opening on this is supposed to be an eighth of an inch and it ends up being a quarter of an inch. In reflection, um, I'm going to need to build the surface up to get to my to my root opening. So what I'll do is I will um, put a layer of weld beads on that, grind the surface down till it's clean, and I've reduced my root opening now. Instead of a quarter, I'm down to an eighth, which is what I should be. That technique is called buttering. Okay, it sounds weird, but it's called buttering. That's that's the word for it in the code book. Um, but these two applications for me have been my my biggest uses of it. So, having talked about what it's used for, let's look at the weld symbol and the, the other symbology. So, the weld symbol looks like that. And that's because when you build up a surface, um, the welds end up kind of being stacked like that. An example of this that we do in the lab are our pad welds. The pad weld exercise we do are surface welds. And when I'm doing our pad welds, got our plate, and we stack the beads like that. that that's what it is. That's what this symbol is. So as far as the symbol goes, this does not have arrow or other side significance. Because it is applied to a flat surface and not through a joint, there is no arrow or other side significance. It's always shown as arrow side. Um, but, but in this weld symbol, we can, we can still give a lot of information about what we're looking for in this weld. We can talk about um, the length of it, the width of it, the direction it goes, and the buildup height. Um, if we're looking at building up an entire surface, so we were going to build up this entire shaft, um, they'd only give you the height. They just tell you how much reinforcement they want. They wouldn't go through the trouble of, of telling you how long it is. It's, it's the whole thing to a certain height. Um, if they only want a piece of it welded, so if they only want this eight inches of shaft built up, they will call that on the drawing. Um, if they wanted a specific location, specific, specific spot, a specific size, they will call that out in the drawing. Um, now, axial versus radial. There are two ways we can do build up, and that is axial and radial. Axial means that the, the build up layers, the weld beads, are in the direction of the axis of the part. So, this is again a piece of shaft. So, this is its axis. Okay? So, axial surface welds will be weld beads 
that are going the length. So they are going in line with the axis of the part. If it was a piece of square stock, it'd be the same deal. Axial means our weld beads would go that way. Okay? Axial. All right? So the other way is radial. Radial is the opposite of actual, ax axial, and that means it's going to go radially around the part. So again, here's our piece of shafting. Radial means it is going to go around and around and around, um, wrapping it up like, imagine we're wrapping rope around this. That, that's how that would be. Um, and why would you do one or the other? Well, I won't do radial unless I've got a positioner that I can spin this, spin this piece of pipe or this piece of shafting. And then I just, I basically, I just lay it on. Just spiral it out like I'm putting threads on it. That works really, really well. Um, if I don't have that ability, doing radial buildup is really difficult because I can weld about half of something or maybe a third of something. I've got to take the part, turn it, weld another third of it, take the part, turn it, weld another third of it. It ends up being a real pain in the butt because I've got all these restarts. So if, unless, unless I can spin this, I'm going to do it um, axially. Because if, if I can't spin this, I've got to do it in place. That's really easy. I can just, I can run full length beads on this thing till I'm out of position, you know, roll it 30 degrees, do the same thing. And I don't have restarts. I can still do the, do the whole deal. Um, if we're going to do this build up before we do um, another weld, we're going to, it's going to do what they call a, um, a multiple reference line weld symbol. And what that means is um, we'll do this guy again. So if I'm going to build that part up, I'm going to have multiple reference lines. So I'm going to have my first reference line. Well, actually, this is my first reference line. The closest to the arrow is always the first process. So if I'm going to do service build up there, I'm going to do that. And then for this guy, um, it's going to be that. What that means is this is my first step. This is my second step. So I'm going to build this up first, and then I'm going to do my bevel groove weld. So now we're going to talk about edge welds. Now edge welds are very different. Um, they are used almost exclusively in sheet metal. Focus. There you go. Um, so edge welds are used almost, like I said, almost exclusively used for sheet metal fabrication. They work great for this. They do have arrow side, other side, or both sides. Significance used with um, flange butt joints, flange corner joints, and edge joints. So a flange butt joint is going to look like this. So the, the parts are butted up, but they're bent into flanges. Um, the flange corner joint is going to be real similar. Terrible drawing. There's a flange corner, so that's flange butt. flange corner, and then the last one is the edge joint. Just like that. Um, so the weld, we're going to, the weld symbol looks just like that, which looks remarkably similar to what our, our joints look like. And the weld is going to be right here on all these. Okay. Um, we can apply the same thing to this weld symbols. We apply to a bunch of others. We can do um, size and length and pitch for intermittent welds, all that kind of good stuff. Um, 
if we're doing length and pitch, it'll be on this side. It'll always be on the right. Size is always going to be on the left. Um, so length and pitch, if we said 2-6, that means a 2-inch weld on 6-inch centers. This is the same as every other intermittent weld pattern. What that means is, here's my plate. What that means is I'm going to have a 2-inch weld on 6-inch centers. So two inches, this is six inches. It's real important when we're talking about this two dash six, we call it two on six. Two inch welds on six inch centers. So the center of this weld and the center of this weld are exactly six inches apart. So, and that's the same for every intermittent weld we do. Um, anything, fillets, edges, everything. It's the same call out every time. Um, let's see. So this is a intermittent weld pattern. There is what they call chain and staggered. Let's say this is two pieces, get the two, two pieces sandwiched on top of each other. So I'm going to do an arrow side and other side. If I stack them like this, where they're, the symbols are right on top of each other, this is called a chain. And what that means is whatever this layout pattern is, this is going to be the same thing. Okay. Two inches, two inches, two inches. So this is chain. The other way is staggered. And what that means is I'm going to offset one of these weld symbols. So see how they're no longer right on top of each other? They've, they've offset each other. And what that means is they're not going to be directly apart from each other. They're going to be set between each other. So between these two, the center line between these two points is where my first two inch weld is going to be. And then six inches from that one, I'm going to have my other one. That's staggered. Okay. Um, let's see. Going back to um, this weld symbol, I'll draw my sheet metal joints again. Hopefully I can draw them better. Not really. So with these welds, um, we can also have melt through. Okay, and melt through if this is my, that's my weld symbol. Melt symbol is a shaded in crown on the other side, just like that. That's melt through. And what that means is um, when I get done welding this, I'm going to melt this through and the end result, I have room out here, the end result is going to be all this is welded. So I've taken these fringes. And as I weld them, they've melted down and kind of filled up that back area. So I've taken I've taken this material, remelted it, and deposited it on the weld. And that's that's done for support. We can also um, on a joint like this, we can also weld the other side. So this is a a flare groove weld or a V groove weld. So on, on the other side. That's flare groove weld. So what that means, I'm going to weld this, but I'm also going to weld this because arrow side, other side, arrow side, other side. And that's done, it, it really stiffens up the joint because you don't have any flex back here. Um, so again, edge welds are something, unless you're in the, like a lot of sheet metal work, HVAC work, you're not going to do a lot of edge welds. Um, I've got an example in the shop, which is the toolbox I built when I was in welding school. We did a uh, flange weld on the end of it, and it worked really well. We actually did it with oxyacetylene. That's how old I am. But uh, I'll show it to you when we get in the lab. If you have any other questions, hit me up in the lab. Hit me up via email or Blackboard, and I'll answer questions as best I can. Thanks.